Well, uh, Soledad, unlike yesterday, where it was a very active scene here, it is much uh, quieter today. We are outside uh, the lands of home. You can't see it behind me because the road is blocked off. It's a little bit of OK, ways. Mary, I'm going to interrupt you there. And let's uh, let's, in fact, head over to this press conference. It looks like uh, Lieutenant Vance is beginning to speak. So let's listen in. Uh, with the progress that we've uh, made in this investigation, uh, with me is the uh, uh, chief of police from Newtown, uh, the field operations commander of the state police, and my counterpart here from uh, Newtown Police Department. Uh, as you know, the uh, victims have been positively identified uh, by the uh, Office of the Chief State's Medical Examiner. Uh, they're still in the process of doing some of their work, and uh, as soon as that work is completed, we will be prepared uh, to release in writing to you uh, a formal uh, uh, list of uh, names, birth dates, and, and information. Uh, there is one, uh, well, there's a couple major factors. Number one, uh, when we release that list, and we would ask you again, as we did yesterday, at the request of all of the family members, they have asked for you to please respect their privacy. They're going through, as I know you understand, a very difficult and trying time. Um, we have, in fact, uh, under the auspices of, of the chief and the colonel, uh, reassign and continue to assign a trooper uh, to these folks to help to maintain uh, that solitude. Uh, so again, I would ask you, and I'm pleading with you, uh, as you know, this is an extremely heartbreaking, difficult thing for these folks to endure, uh, to please abide by their requests. Um, in addition, for the townspeople uh, in the town of Newtown, a crisis intervention team from Yale New Haven Hospital has been established uh, here in the community, and they can be reached via telephone. Uh, that telephone number is 203-270-4283. And again, they're, they're open and they're available to anyone in the community who may have uh, the need to discuss, to talk, uh, to, to uh, talk about this, uh, this incident in its entirety. Um, I have the ability to take some questions. I just simply want you to understand that we still have major crime detectives and Newtown detectives working at the scene in the school. That is not completed. That probably will not be completed for at least another day and a half to two days. And I'm putting a time limit on it, and it could take longer. Uh, as I explained to you in previous press conferences, we've done everything we need to do uh, to literally peel back the onion layer by layer Okay, and examine every crack and crevice of that facility. And that does not include, or exclude, I should say, the outside of the building. The outside of the building is also a part of the crime scene, every single vehicle in that lot. So it's going to be a long, painstaking process. Uh, we actually have three teams now, three major crime teams in the community. Uh, our, our local partners are working with us, and, and we're going to move that as, uh, and expedite that along as quickly as possible. Uh, we had a meeting uh, this morning, and that was a delay with the uh, superintendent of schools. Uh, she will be, um, uh, hopefully, in the not-too-distant future, up here uh, to talk briefly um, about some of the issues that, uh, that she has encountered. Uh, the minute the medical examiner is done, and I mean that sincerely, the minute he is done, uh, he is coming here, and we will, uh, again, provide, provide all the detailed information, or as much detailed information as we can relative to... Uh, of the work that his office did uh, both overnight and, and continue to do as we speak. Um, again, as far as actual specific questions, I'll take a few, but I have to tell you, all right, there are certain things that were just simply cards that we're holding close to our chest uh, in this investigation until, so nothing's taken out of context and we have continuity of, of all the information that we provide. Yes, sir. Well, there were reports that there were other guns other than the one he used found in the school. Are those no, that's 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 not accurate. The uh, the weaponry that, uh, that was recovered by our uh, investigators recovered in close proximity of uh, of the deceased. And again, we're we're investigating the history of each and every weapon, and we will know every single thing about those weapons. And I know follow-up questions are legally registered, who are the owners, and so on and so forth. That's all being done by the investigator that's assigned to that task. Is the shooter Adam Lenza? Yeah, we, we're, we're, again, we're going to allow the medical examiner, we're going to wait for the medical examiner to, uh, 
uh, to come in and provide the identities of the shooter of all the deceased in this in this investigation. Senator, have you found any writings, any emails, any messages that would have would enlighten you as to what his motive was? That, that certainly is a, is a fair, good question. Uh, the answer I can give you on that is that our investigators at the crime scene, the school, and secondarily at the uh, secondary crime scene that we discussed uh, where the female was located deceased, uh, did produce uh, some very, uh, a very good evidence uh, in this investigation that our investigators will be able to use uh, in hopefully uh, painting the complete picture as to how and more importantly why this occurred we don't we're not going to name the evidence we're not going to talk about the evidence it's simply uh, simply stated it's part and parcel of the investigation i don't want to take it out of context of uh, of what's being done we have established the point of entry uh, it was, uh, I can tell you, it was, it's believed he was not voluntarily let into the school at all, uh, that he forced his way into the school, but that's uh, as far as we can go on that. Are there any broken windows at the school? Are there what? Windows. Yeah, quite frankly, that's, that's something, again, if you take it out of context, it sounds suspicious, but uh, as the rescue crews arrived, the uh, active shooting teams entered the school. They entered the school from several different points and it necessitated forcing their way in to gain access to perform the rescue and to save as many students and faculty as they possibly could. Hence, law enforcement broke many windows. What about the other scene where the body was found? What's that? What about the other scene? The, the other crime scene? Yeah, the secondary crime scene, as I told you, was, was a crime scene that was discovered pursuant to the investigation. Uh, once we had a tentative identification on the uh, suspect, we began doing um, a great deal of work uh, Again, peeling back the onion, everything we could find out about that suspect, including and not limited to uh, relatives, friends, co-workers, uh, former students, um, uh, location of, of residents, and all those areas had to be, people had to be interviewed, and all those areas had to be examined. Uh, hence, that caused us to discover the secondary crime scene, which was a private residence with a sole female deceased. The evidence of the house, do you think it will provide you a motive or an explanation as to why he went to school? To be determined, the detectives will, will certainly analyze everything and put a complete picture together of, of the evidence that they, that they did obtain. Um, and we're hopeful, we're hopeful that it'll, it'll paint a complete picture as to how and why this entire incident, uh, unfortunate incident occurred. On the other crime scene, survived. did you find a man or a woman? I'm sorry? There was one woman who uh, was shot and survived. How was she doing? Uh, she, she is doing fine. She, she has been treated and, and uh, she'll be instrumental in this investigation. I'm sure you can understand. That I don't know. That I don't. The shooter in this case uh, appeared to break into the school. Force forcibly force his way into the school. That would be that would be accurate according to investigators. Yes. And does it appear to use weapons to break his I, way? I, I don't I don't want to be too specific because quite frankly I don't know. So I, I would simply I've been informed that it was forcibly entered and was not allowed to enter, if you will. Um, All right, what I what I'd like to do is is it's I'd like to uh, get the next portion, if you will, of today. And I, I don't want to keep you here all day. I want to try and do this as expeditiously as we possibly can and get as much information out to you. Uh, we'd like to get the uh, uh, the superintendent definitely wants to come up with the town leaders uh, to, to discuss uh, uh, certain uh, areas of her responsibility. Uh, and then we, we certainly want to get the medical examiner up here. And again, we'll do that as quickly as we possibly can so we can get uh, the list of IDs and all the information out to you. Uh, for any of you that are new here today, a lieutenant and I have put together a, a written press release. Uh, we'll, we'll provide those to you uh, at my vehicle. Please don't rush my vehicle. We have we should have enough for everyone. And if not, we'll bring more uh, next time we come up. And it just lays out the basic details of everything leading up up until uh, today. All right. We will uh, we will try. I don't want to give you time, but we will try to be back here. I'm going to say within the hour. I'll, I'll make notification to some of you that uh, that I can that we're on the way. All right. Yes, sir. One question. Now, you have to understand that after the shooting, that we did a complete and thorough search of the entire area, the neighborhood, uh, with our local partners. Everything, everything was examined. If we found anyone that was in the woods cutting wood, they would be, they would be detained uh, pending the investigation. So there were no other arrests that were associated with this with this investigation uh, that occurred, okay? So, uh, 
I would I would have you address that with the uh, with the superintendent of schools. Okay, we can she can she can give you that answer. We're, we we will we will be back. I need to get if I don't get here, we're going to be here quite some time. I know you have a lot of questions. And I think the people that are coming here that are, we're bringing here to speak to you can really answer these questions and put a lot of. Uh, take a lot of the mystery out of, of what we've been dealing with for the last 24 hours. All right. Okay, we will we will be back. Welcome back, everybody. You've been listening to a press conference. It was held by uh, Lieutenant Vance. He's with the state police. Uh, not a lot to update folks on. They had uh, sent out a written statement as well, and it was very consistent. Said a couple of things. He was joined, by the way, uh, by the chief of police from, from the town here, Newton, Connecticut, uh, and also a lieutenant with the police department. And he said um, as soon as the list of deceased is, in fact, completed, that he would make that public. The medical examiner would be charged with that, that all the family members, members who have lost someone have uh, have been united in saying they would like uh, everyone to respect their privacy and to help to that end he has assigned a trooper to each of those families and he's called that to help maintain the solitude but really meaning that there will be a barrier of uh, to, to keep people from uh, getting to those families, uh, to give them some uh, time and give them some uh, distance and respect their privacy. And, and, and he uh, reemphasized that and he said, you know, we're asking and I am pleading with you, talking to the, the large number of press that's been gathered here, asking and pleading to please respect their privacy, what they have lost. Uh, is just uh, unimaginable at this point. He said that a crisis intervention team from Yale New Haven Hospital uh, was on the scene, that they'd be available by phone to anybody who, who had a question or wanted some kind of guidance who was in the community. And he said um, that there were a lot of questions that they were working to answer. Uh, he, the detectives are right now on the scene of that school. They're inside the school. He said he thought it could take a day. It could even take a, as long as two days. Uh, they're going to peel back the onion, that was his quote, to try to investigate every crack and crevice and really uh, figure out what had happened and the order in which things had happened in that 10-minute window when the shootings happened. Uh, outside of the building, he said, uh, it was also part of that crime scene. There are three crime teams, he said, and he, he, he essentially ended by saying investigators would eventually have a very full picture of how and why this occurred. Uh, the how and why, which of course I think are, are the questions that everybody's really been trying to understand. He said they want to talk to relatives and friends and co-workers and former classmates of the shooters. Uh, that um, that the woman who was we know was injured and who had been at one point in the room with the school psychologist and the principal, they would having a, a meeting about a student that morning. Uh, she ended up being shot in the foot, I believe, and also the arm. Uh, but that she was going to be instrumental in piecing together uh, what had happened in this investigation. And with that, he he ended what was really a very short press conference. He said the superintendent and town leaders are going to want to talk to folks and also the medical examiner uh, would be someone that we would be hearing from as soon as they finished the identification process uh, they would be able to update us on uh, and some more information so that's where uh, it stands right now in terms of, of the investigation but I, I'd go back to the, the how and the why and I think uh, Sanjay Gupta is joining me now that is always the question for those of us who cover these things and those of us who, who watch it on TV and people in town too certainly uh, and people who've lost people like the why behind it there has been, uh, is there a connective thread when it comes to these mass shootings? Are there things that happen in mass shootings that deal with mental stability? Um, oftentimes there are, but oftentimes what I keep hearing, and I, I've talked to lots of people about this, as I know you have over the years, a lot of times the answer is unknowable. And, and I think that that's a really important thing to say because it's not satisfying. People want to know the answer to these questions, but sometimes we just never uh, can know for sure. And even after the investigation is done of the people uh, that are closest uh, to the person involved here, you still, you still don't have a, a, a very satisfying answer. And I, I, I just say that because I think it's something that people may need to be prepared for. That over the next couple of days, there may not be come back a definitive reason. All sorts of speculation, as, as you know, as to, to, to what people are saying about this, but I, I don't know that we know any of that for sure, and we may never. We know that a family member told investigators that uh, the shooter had uh, 
some type of autism, I think is a phrase they used. And, you know, and as I've told you a bunch of times, my nephew's autistic, yeah. so I, I know a little bit about autism. And I have never seen any connection between autism and, and violent behavior. Is there a connection between autism and any violent behavior? Is there a connection between violent behavior and any other mental illness? I think with or I should say a mental illness, since autism is not a mental illness. Right. Uh, autism is not a mental illness. It's a, it's a neurodevelopmental disorder. It's not a personality disorder as some people have suggested as well. And, I, and there's no evidence to suggest that there is a link uh, between autism or anything on the autism spectrum and planned violence. 